What should you expect from your open water scuba diver training? Oh, I'm making this video. I just really hope it doesn't end up being three hours long. Ladies and gentlemen, what's going on? And welcome to Divers Ready. My name's James. It is so great to see all of your smiling faces. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, please make your next dive on our subscribe button and click that little bell icon because I use my expertise as a technical diving instructor to make videos with one simple goal in mind, and that's to help make you a better scuba diver. And here we are, guys, at the end of this series. We've counted down all the recreational ranks in the core progression of scuba diving from master scuba diver, Two weeks ago, rescue diver, last week, advanced open water, and now we're at entry level courses, commonly referred to as open water diver. And as I said in the intro, I could easily make this video three hours long talking about the open water diver course. Don't worry, I'm not going to. We're gonna keep a cap on it and just focus on the structure of the course, what to look for in the course. And then at the end of this video, I'll give you five tips for how you can prepare yourself before starting your open water diver course. Now, in the description of every video on this channel, I clearly put a kind of a, a disclaimer, I suppose, that says always seek training, right? I'm not trying to teach people how to dive through the internet. That is not a thing. Always get training from a recognized training agency and an authorized instructor. All my videos are designed with that in mind. I'm talking mostly to people who are already certified divers, but it's become apparent to me through comments and through emails that I receive that there's a lot of people out there who have not done a scuba diving course and yet are watching my content, uncertified divers. They're doing their research ahead of doing their open water diver training. Welcome to the channel. That is an incredibly smart thing to do. Congratulations on being a smart person. What's that like? Let me know in the comments below. All jokes aside, guys, this video is the first video I'm ever talking to uncertified divers to give you advice on what to do if you're approaching your open water diver certification. As with all the videos in this series, we're gonna keep this as training agency agnostic as possible because basically all the standards are the same, all the courses are the same. In fact, all the major training agencies out there agree on what the standards should be in their own little council that they made up for themselves. So it doesn't really matter which training agency you go with. You've heard me say it before on the channel, find the right instructor. Because your open water course is your introduction to the sport, it is your entry level, it's your first time interacting with a dive professional, your instructor, it's a massive topic. And I, I will make other videos on the open water diver topic about how to get the most for your money and how to avoid having your open water course becoming a crushing disappointment, stamping on all your dreams and ruining the sport scuba diving for you forever. But for today, let's stick with the, uh, the same sort of structure that I've been doing throughout this series of videos and look at the structure of the course and then later, as I said, how you can prepare for the course. As has become habit with this series of videos, let's have a look at the chart of prerequisites from some of the common global training agencies as to what you need to be able to start your open water diver training. Pretty much the same across the board. Minimum age is 10 with parental consent. That gets you your junior open water. At age 15, you can upgrade to full open water. And there is a slight difference in the maximum depth between doing a junior open water and a full open water. I think it's 12 meters for most ages agencies with your junior open water and then that gets upgraded to 18 meters 60 feet when you get your full open water upon turning 15. Uh, you need to be able to pass a basic watermanship test of a swim and a float. Um, the swim is usually around 200 meters. It's not timed. You don't have to be Michael Phelps. Um, you just have to be able to swim 200 meters non-stop and you need to be able to show that you can float for 10 minutes. That's a float not a tread. You can just lie back and take it easy. 10 minutes, don't touch the side of the pool. You also need to be able to answer no to a variety of questions about medical conditions. It's a really good idea to get the medical form for the agency you're training with ahead of time. Because if you do have any yes answers on the medical questionnaire, it doesn't necessarily proclivate you from participating in scuba training, but what your instructor will ask you to do is go to a doctor, go to your primary care physician, and have them sign off to say that they find no reason that you shouldn't be able to participate in scuba diving. So it's really disappointing if you show up on the first day of class, you haven't looked at the medical form, and you hand it in and uh, they say, oh, sorry, you gotta go get checked out by a doctor when you're all like ready to go diving. It's kind of sucks. Okay, so you're 10 years old, you're relatively healthy, you can swim, you can float, you're ready to learn how to scuba dive. 
How does that work then? Well, your open water diver course across all agencies has pretty much the same components as any other level of scuba diver training going all the way up to instructor. There's gonna be a period of self-study, which is normally done either online or with a book, with a manual. There's gonna be some open water training dives. And between the two, you're gonna have some theory classes that are led by the instructor. The open water diver class is slightly different in that there's an additional training session called confined water. So let's have a look at each of those sections in turn, starting with the self-study. Self-study is completed one of two ways, either with a good old-fashioned manual like this, or through e-learning on a tablet or PC. Whichever method you choose, the knowledge is broken up into chapters that are easy to digest. You read through the chapters, there may be some videos if it's e-learning, and then at the end of the chapters, you're gonna answer some review questions to make sure you understood and comprehended the information in the chapter before. Now, if you come to me for training, I will always give you the manual. You can do the e-learning by all means if that's how you prefer to learn, but I want all my students to have the manual. I include it in the price of my open water course because a year, 18 months, two years go by, I want you to have this on your bookshelf to be able to reference. If you go a break between diving and you need to do a refresher, first step in the refresher is to take this down from the shelf and read through it again. Whichever method you choose, it is essential that you read all the information before showing up for the first day of class. Read the whole manual, complete all your e-learning before day one with your instructor. We all thank you. The next section is instructor-led theory. So you've completed the self-study, you come into the classroom, your instructor's gonna have you complete paperwork, give you the schedule for the rest of the course, collect any fees that are outstanding, and then dive into that theory in more depth than it's covered in the book itself. They're gonna go through the review questions and prescriptively correct anything you got wrong, and just generally make sure you've got a firm grasp of the essential theory of scuba diving before you get in the water. Now, a couple of points on that, just, just while we're here. There are PowerPoints and there are videos. For the majority of training agency, these are terrible training tools. The PowerPoints are death by PowerPoint. They are the most boring slides in the world. They take a sport that I love and find exciting and, and bore you to death with PowerPoint, death by PowerPoint. And the videos, I think the newest one for any agency was shot in 1989. So you can see what scuba diving used to look like before we had you know, modern dive equipment. Either way, by the end of your instructor-led theory sessions, you should have a good understanding of the equipment and the theory behind scuba diving and be ready to hit the water. The next section, as I said, is your confined water skills. Now, confined water is defined as swimming pool-like conditions. So think about a swimming pool. You've got clear visibility, you've got no current, you've got nice flat, calm surface, and you've got an easy way to get in and out of a swimming pool. Doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a swimming pool, but it should have those conditions. And the idea with the confined water is you spend as long as you need with your instructor in a safe learning environment to practice and practice the skills. Your instructor is gonna be there with you. They're gonna demonstrate a skill. They're gonna ask you if you're okay. If you're not okay, ask them to demonstrate again if you missed something. And your instructor should be comfortable to demonstrate a skill as many times as you want them to do that. Once you've got a handle on it and they ask you okay and you give the okay back, then you're gonna have a go. Do not be offended if your instructor says, do it again. Hey, great job, fist bump, high five. Do it again. In the swimming pool is when you're gonna get the muscle memory and repetition of these skills. What you don't want is an instructor who just goes through the skills and makes you do each one once. Okay, great, you did it perfectly the first time. Do it again, do it again, do it again, and keep doing it until you've got the muscle memory down. My best advice for your confined water sessions is don't be in a rush to get through them. Take your time. You're probably not gonna be back in a swimming pool for any other time during your scuba diver training progression. Because you're gonna be a certified diver, the rest of your training is gonna happen in open water. So take your time, enjoy the proving ground. Don't be in a rush to get out of the pool and go and see cool stuff. Plenty of time for that after you've certified. Before you get certified, you need to refine the skills and the best place to do that is in a confined training environment. The fourth and final part of a good entry-level scuba diving course is your open water dives, often referred to as checkout dives. This is where you take all the skills you practiced in confined water, 
to the open ocean, to the quarry, to the lake, and face the elements and show your instructor, check out with your instructor, prove to them that you can do the skills required to be a safe, careful scuba diver. Now, during your open water dives, your instructor's not gonna be demonstrating skills to you. They're gonna sign what skill they'd like you to perform and then it's over to you. You need to draw on what you learn in the confined water sessions and bring that and show that you can do these skills in the open water. All the time, enjoying the environment, by all means, having fun, going around, seeing cool stuff. If you're in the ocean, lakes, quarries, whatever, looking at whatever the features are on that dive, but that shouldn't be the focus of the dive. Plenty of time for fun afterwards. Open water dives are still training dives, and the focus should be on skill development. And look, guys, that's a really brief overview of the four sections of your open water diver course. I could make a video on each of those four sections in turn and go into a lot more detail. Maybe I will. But for now, let me give you my five top tips for how you can prepare yourself to get the most out of your open water diver course. Starting with number one, you've guessed it, you've heard me say it before, choose your instructor carefully. The number one thing that has the most influence on how much you enjoy this sport going forwards is your open water instructor. Not the agency, not the dive shop, the actual person who's in front of you. And to allow yourself to be randomly assigned an instructor is really a bad idea and it's a mistake I see a lot of people making. They wander into a dive center, say, hey, I'd like to learn to dive. And then they say, oh, here's your instructor, Susie, or here's your instructor, Brett, and off you go diving together. Well, that's not enough, really. That person's gonna be in charge of your safety for the next few days. Talk to Susie, talk to Brett, find out what kind of an instructor they are. Do you gel with them? How do they teach? I'm gonna make a whole separate video on questions you can ask your instructor ahead of time. That'll be something that comes up on this channel for sure. It's on my list of videos to make. But please, at least have five, 10 minutes on the phone, in person with the instructor, and see if you've got that kind of connection there where they're somebody that you feel you can learn from. My number two tip for you to prepare yourself for your open water diver course is read all the material, everything you can get your hands on, not just the manual and the course materials and the self-study and the e-learning and that, but everything. Read books about scuba diving, read articles, watch YouTube videos, and get your hands on as many different sources as possible so you actually have a nice, well-rounded view of the sport. The students that I find have the greatest success with their open water course are those that have read beyond the minimum standard. So instead of just doing the manual and the e-learning, they've looked at gear, they've researched how different pieces of equipment work, they've understood buoyancy and propulsion and trim, and they know how they should be breathing underwater, and so on and so forth. They're digesting more than the minimum amount of information, and that makes you much better prepared for entering the water and performing scuba skills. Tip number three for how you can prepare yourself for your open water diver course is be real with yourself about your in-water comfort level. There are a lot of skills in scuba diving that some people find challenging or uncomfortable at the entry level. You have to remove your mask. You have to be comfortable breathing through the regulator. You have to be comfortable taking the regulator out of your mouth and putting it back in again. These things that seem simple to an instructor are incredibly challenging to somebody who has never done them before. You need to be real with how comfortable you are in that kind of training environment. And a good practice for that is just doing some free diving in a swimming pool, taking your goggles off, opening your eyes underwater, learning to breathe through your mouth while snorkeling around a swimming pool. All of these things can help you kind of self-assess, am I ready to start scuba diver training? Tip number four to help you prepare for your open water diver course is you need to decide what kind of experience you want your course to be. Now, this often comes down to a budgetary decision, but let me give you this piece of information. Across most of the popular scuba training agencies, one instructor is allowed to teach a class of eight students at a time, which means realistically, if all the students have the same ability, you can expect one eighth of your instructor's attention. And if there's a problem child in that group, then the amount of attention you get is gonna go down, 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 proportional to the amount of time they have to spend with Damien. Or maybe you prefer a more personalized approach and do your course one-to-one -one with your instructor, and that way you're guaranteed 100% of your instructor's time, focus, and attention. Now, obviously there's a budgetary difference there if you're doing private classes as opposed to a group training environment. So you might need to offset and find a middle ground as to what you're happy with but do have a think about what kind of experience you want your training to become. 
My fifth tip for helping you prepare for your open water diver course is make sure you understand the costs, how they break down, what's included and what's not included. And by this, I mean that there are lots of factors that go into pricing out a scuba course. Is your manual included? Is the processing fee included that we pay to the training agency? Is your card included? Is the mailing for the card included? Does it include rental gear? Does it include tanks, weights? Are these gonna be boat dives? Uh, what about my instructor's time? Gratuities, are they included or not? All these kind of things can make a huge difference to the amount your course actually costs. Now, some dive centers seem to be in what I call a race to the bottom, so they can advertise the lowest possible price for scuba diver training, which is kind of like buying a parachute from a bargain bin. It's not a great idea. But what they do is they say, oh, your scuba course will cost you this much, and then you need to pay for this, 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 and this separately. Well, then your course isn't this much, is it? So make sure you ask those people, okay, are there any hidden costs? Is there anything additional I need to pay so that you're not left with a bit of taste in your mouth at the end of your course? This has really been an interesting video for me to make because as I said, it's the first one we're making on this channel that's aimed at people who aren't already certified divers. So I'm trying to put myself in that place of what do I wish I'd known before my open water diver course? Or what are some of the questions I get from people who are looking to me as their potential instructor now and trying to package that all together? So this will not be the last video we make on the topic. We will look at the open water course from a bunch of different directions for sure in the coming weeks. But it's just been an absolute blast and thank you so much for joining me. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I'll put some of our back catalog over here. You know how it works by now. And just below, drop us a comment. Let us know, have you done your open water course already? Did you enjoy it? Did you get the most out of it? Or what do you wish you'd known before you did your open water course? Or if you're looking to do your open water course, what's holding you back? Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name's James. This was your Divers Ready video for this week. Dive safe, dive often.